We'd like to welcome you back for another edition of Diocese Insight. Joining me today is um, Cynthia Aguilar and Cynthia Cavasa from the Fountain of Mercy Ministries. I'd like to welcome you guys here. Thank you. Um, and first I'm going to ask Cynthia Aguilar about her role in, in Fountain of Mercy Ministries and to share with, with us a little bit more about herself. Cynthia? Hi. Um, my name is Cynthia Aguilar and I am the board secretary uh, for Fountain of Mercy Ministries. And um, our uh, purpose uh, for Fountain of Mercy Ministries is to spread the message of mercy. We're almost like apostles of mercy. Uh, like uh, St. Faustina. So um, what we try to do is we're more of an evangelizing center where we're trying to get people acquainted uh, with divine mercy as far as it not just being a devotion but a way of life. And, um, and so what we try to do with everything that we do is uh, try to promote as many things as possible to spread that message of mercy. Thank you for sharing with us, Cynthia. And now Cynthia Cavasa, who is uh, also a part of Fountain of Mercy Ministries. Right. I am the, the president of Fountain of Mercy Ministries. I've uh, been the president for the last two years, two and a half years. Um, I've been with, the, with Fountain of Mercy Ministries since it started. It started about going a little over 10 years. And it was started uh, in Westlaco by uh, four ladies, which was one, of, one was I. The other three ladies was uh, Gloria Sines and uh, Maria Elena who, Ramos, who passed away about a, two years ago, and uh, Tony Fuentes, who retired uh, about a year ago. And uh, those were the ladies who, who founded the organization, and uh, um, I ended up staying and, and took a lead on it when Tony retired, and uh, it was a blessing for me. Um, I wasn't as active as they were, but uh, uh, thank you to Tony and Maria Elena and Gloria for starting the organization. And uh, we've done more than just the conferences, which we're going to talk about. Sure. Um, and so one of the things that we want to be able to talk and share with, with those that are our viewers is um, the role of Fountains of Mercy Ministries. Uh, being an apostolate within the diocese, um, the role is to help engage, help others know about the message of, of mercy that God is always welcome and inviting us to return to Him, and so the mercy that is extended to us. And um, one of the things I wanted to, sh to talk a little bit more about is what are the, the different ways that Fountains of Mercy Ministries has and can continue to help us throughout the year, um, um, highlighting that it's not just a conference, that, that day event, but also what are things that um, anybody, any person can go to and, and visit and experience there at the center. Well, some of the programs that we currently have and we're trying to get more in place, uh, first of all is first of all is the Hearts of Fire parish-based programs, and that's a foundational program where we uh, focus on Marian consecration. From Marian consecration, then we move on to Divine Mercy consecration with consoling the heart of Jesus and also 33 Days to Merciful Love which is part of the uh, uh, Hearts of Fire program. And then we uh, move on to the Holy Trinity. So we go from Mary to Jesus and then to the Holy Trinity. Uh, and then what we also do is we bring other series uh, that are also a part of, of the Hearts of Fire program, which is uh, The Greatest Story Ever Told on John Paul II. And uh, currently, Father Michael Gately is working on, um, on another um, on another book that is totally devoted just to Mary herself. And so what we also try to do is bring in, for example, people that are in parishes that are presenting uh, programs, like for example, Mary of Nazareth is a program that one of the parishes in uh, Westlaco is doing. And so we've talked to some of the people that are presenters in their own parish, and we ask them to share, not just, uh, to, they continue in their own parish presenting, but we also ask them to share with the rest of the, di uh, the, rest of the parishes to be able to get other people to attend, and then they go back and they implement the program within their own parish, which is really evangelizing throughout, the, throughout South Texas. Um, we also try to do one-day seminars uh, or one-day retreats, for example, like for uh, the virtuous woman, where they actually learn about the virtues of Mary. We try to do, uh, the, like for example, healing, the healing tree. Uh, Sister Emma Stillman came and did a presentation on that. 
Um, we also have other people that are presenters throughout the Valley that come in and they bring in some of their ideas. But b before we get anything presented, uh, we have to go through the bishop uh, so that it's not just something that we decide out of the clear blue to present. It's something that is it's really going to help in evangelization and so it has to be presented to the bishop and if the bishop approves then we move forward with it otherwise we won't so what i gather is that mostly um we're talking about how the work gets done at the center but also at the parishes yes. so talking about how this is a, a more of a diocesan endeavor in a sense that um, it's not just there at the center in Wesleyan, but also branching out to the parishes yes um, i remember you sharing with me earlier about um, parish liaisons. Can you tell me a little bit more about the liaisons? Yes, the parish liaisons are people. Some of this, what has happened in uh, Fountain of Mercy Ministries is that every year they would have a conference, and so these parish liaisons would go out and they would distribute information about things that were going on in Fountain of Mercy Ministries. And so we try to utilize the parish liaisons to be able to take this information back to the parishes so that they will be the contact at the parish to distribute information as far as seminars, retreats, conferences, or anything that we hold that will help the parish, uh, it, um, evangelize in the parish. And so they are the main contact at the parish. And we have sev several people across, all the way from um, La uh, Roma to Brownsville, where people actually, sometimes uh, these people have been with the parish for a while as parish liaisons, and then sometimes people will attend a retreat, and one of the parishes may not have a parish liaison, and so that some of the people will come in and they'll say, oh, I would like to volunteer to do that job. I'm pretty active in my parish, so I would like to take that role. And so we try to work with them so that we can help them. We'll, we'll try to go out and meet the priest, introduce ourselves, and help them also get started within the parish. Um, one of the, uh, the items that I wanted to sh talk about and see if you, want, you could share more is about um, some of the counseling or, or some of the grieving and bereavement ministry that you do have there at the center. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. Uh, we have offered us, you know how everybody has, um, uh, has, has a loss of some sort. So what we try to offer are bereavement classes, and we utilize um, uh, Lydia Pesina through her office has offered a bereavement training. And so we try to utilize the materials that she uses in the diocese uh, in order to be able to train uh, people that want to offer bereavement uh, groups. And so we utilize those materials. It's a journal that she has uh, uh, proposed. And so we utilize that material. The counselor, uh, we um, advertise everywhere. We market so that uh, it'll be uh, advertised everywhere in all the parishes. So that anybody that needs bereavement counseling, they are able to attend if their parish does not have a bereavement group or if they're not necessarily going to somewhere uh, to receive a counseling for bereavement. We also have divorce counseling. Uh, some of the, sometimes people will show up at the center and they will be asking for certain types of counseling. Okay. And so we look at the numbers as to how many people are asking for that particular um, need. And so we try to focus on delivering the need that's needed out there. And uh, that's what we offer. At the current time, we're offering bereavement and uh, grievance counseling. Okay, yes. Very much working and walking along and accompanying, just like Pope Francis <laughs> asks us to walk and journey. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about what are the other activities that are being done by the ministry. And so one of the things that, that we were talking about earlier was about spiritual direction or even um, looking into what are ways that we can grow in our faith. Um, I know we were talking about spiritual formation, so I want to ask you what are some things that are being proposed um, of how do we listen, how do we meditate, or even uh, contemplate? What are some of those ideas? Okay, so um, we since we offer Marian consecration and Divine Mercy consecration, um, a lot of people will ask, okay, so now what? What do we do now? And so another avenue that we started to go through is um, to be able to offer contemplation based on um, Santa Teresa de Avila oh. and, Sir, uh, and um, St. John of the Cross. And we try to bring in some of their principles, some of their, uh, some of their thoughts in regards to um, not just knowing Marian consecration and doing Marian consecration, but continuing using a meditative process to be able to 
uh, continue forth with uh, not just doing the book and learning the book and participating in it, but actually participating in a deeper and more profound way through contemplation. So more of interior, more yes. um, going deeper into what each of, of um, both St. John of the Cross and St. Teresa of Avila have proposed to us of, of, of working on those things that may keep us away from getting closer to Jesus. And so um, some of the other things that we want to be able to talk now is about the different conferences that have been done in the past. And so um, thinking back um, in the previous conference you just had, um, if you could share a little bit more about who were the speakers and also what were some of the things that were, were done at, at the past uh, Divine Mercy Conference? Uh, this past, well, in February, we had uh, John Michael Talbot come. Uh, he was one of the speakers and also a singer. And uh, Father Kirby, uh, he was one of the presenters too. Uh, what we did different this year, we had Father Garcia, Durling Garcia, Gurley Garcia, and uh, um, also the bishop, um, I'm sorry, the bishop was there, uh, Bishop Flores, who gave a talk, started the conference. And we had, um, the MC was also uh, Ray Thomas. Ray Thomas was our MC, which was a little bit different before we didn't have a priest or a deacon uh, do the MC, but this year we did. And so uh, coming next year, we're pretty excited because it's going to be our 10th anniversary. And so we are planning to do a little bit different and maybe have uh, two speakers and a band, uh, music. And one priest has already confirmed, which is Father Chris Alar, which has been here before. And uh, we still haven't confirmed with the second one, so I really don't want to say who it sure. is until we've confirmed. But we're also talking to John Michael Talbot because we had a very good uh, response with John Michael Talbot. And he loved the area. And as a matter of fact, he even loved the ministry that he wanted to come back. And this time when he comes back, he wants to do a concert. So I just spoke to him last week and we're talking about bringing him back just to do a two hour conference at some parish. We haven't picked the parish yet, but a local parish and um, just do a, con a, a, a concert. Sure. And the other thing that we're going to do that I'm pretty excited about is Father uh, Dave Pavanka, which uh, is from Canada, and he has agreed to come down to do a three-day evening retreat. And his focus is on the Holy Spirit. And um, Cynthia, can you tell us a little bit more about it? It's, he's got a series on the wild goose, which is uh, on the Holy Spirit. I think uh, we had a lot, you know, you know how we, uh, I said earlier something about we kind of respond to the needs of the people. Mm -hmm. And since our past conference was on the Holy Spirit, that was the theme of the conference, the Holy Spirit. So every talk dealt with uh, how to be able to appro approach or address or who is the Holy Spirit. And so uh, Father Dave Pavanka really has, um, has outlined um, a series just on the Holy Spirit. So every person that he has in every single talk is how to be able to pray to the Holy Spirit, how to be able to know who this Holy Spirit is, and how do we get in, how do we, how are, do we as a person um, make, have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? How do we develop a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit? And so he really works on trying to help you uh, work interiorly to be able to always call on the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit surrounds you. All right. And so it sounds like there's a lot of preparation already underway. Mm -hmm. um, we're a little bit less than a year, and, and it seems like um, everything is almost set. So we're looking forward to February 22nd, 2020. Wow. 2020. February 22nd, 2020. But I also want to take time to talk about how is it that you're also helping not just the adults, but helping the young person. So helping our youth of our diocese. I know in the past we've had different um, opportunities through Fountains of Mercy Ministries. Um, I know in the past we had uh, Leonardo de Filippis uh, come in and, and, and help us um, through the portrayal of St. Faustina and through others. Um, but in this case, we want to talk about a little bit more about youth ministry and how we're collaborating uh, with the diocese in a sense that um, bringing in this national gathering of young people, um, and it's called Holy Fire. Could Correct. Could you share with yeah. us a bit more? Well, we're pretty excited because not only the, uh, the group that we had, we wanted to be able to help uh, the, the, the middle school, the middle school. I know that we have confirmation and we take, you know, we've got already something set for our, our confirmation classes. 
But um, you're right, uh, De Philippus was here, and he did St. Uh, Maximilian Kobe. And what we did is uh, we connected with the Catholic schools uh, here in the Valley, and we did five locations from uh, Brownsville, Harlingen, Edinburgh, uh, Farr, and uh, McAllen. And we had uh, the kids uh, from the school participate or show up and help us also set up. So it was pretty successful. So what we decided is we wanted to do a youth rally. And uh, we're connected with the diocese. We talked to them, and they've agreed to help us. And what we did is there's a group called from Washington, D.C., called the Holy Fire. And we have been talking to them for the past few months, and their rallies is for the middle school, which would be 12, 13 years old to about ninth grade. And um, they only do large venues or large conferences. Like in Chicago, they had over 5,000 kids. So what we did is we said, okay, try a small venue. And so we are the first small venue that they're going to have. And they're going to show us how to put on this rally for the for the youth. And as a matter of fact, we're the first ones in Texas, so we're pretty excited. So uh, we are going to be the uh, sponsors, as we say, and the ho- and the host is going to be the diocese. So we're working with them, with the kids, and we're hoping to have over a thousand kids. And so we're pretty excited about that one. It's our first. So Holy Fire um, is a partnership that's also done through a national organization that we have for for youth ministry, NFCYM, the National Federation for Youth uh, Ministry. And so um, the idea is that we want to try to bring the diocese together as a whole. And we're even going to invite the neighboring diocese, so looking at Laredo, San Antonio, Corpus Christi, to be able to come in and to say, we're going to have this event, first time in Texas that we're going to do, um, and we're going to invite them, and hopefully our numbers can go up there too. And so for the date for that we're looking forward to is January 18th, 2020. And so we want to be able to say is that we want to have the save the date for, for, for these two events. First, for the conference, that is February 22nd, 2020. And second, for the Holy Fire Youth Conference or Youth Rally. And that's January 18th, 2020. So those are two events that we're looking forward to in the future. Now, one of the things I wanted to be able to talk about also is... Um, the location, because the center is located in Westlaco, and so we want to get you that address. It's 448 South Texas Avenue in Westlaco. Again, that's 448 South Texas Avenue in Westlaco, and the phone number you can reach them at is 956-351-5978. Again, that number is 956-351-5978, but they can also find you on the web. So um, the website is www f-o-m-m dot u-s that's fountain of mercy ministries so f-o-o sorry f-o-m-m dot u-s but you also have a youtube channel yes we started uh youtube because for uh, this year what we did is you know for those who couldn't attend or couldn't be there we videotaped the uh, talks so all five talks will be presented on our youtube channel as a matter of fact today will be the first day that we put out their first talk and so you'll see in the next five weeks through Lent, you'll see the talks on on YouTube. So if you want to listen to it again or haven't heard it, please join us on YouTube. And so, again, um, they're available um, either in person at their center, 448 South Texas Avenue. Um, Our number to reach them is 351-5978. The website is fomm.us, Fountains of Mercy Ministries. And so... um, Fountain of Mercy Ministries, again, is an evangelization uh, ministry or apostle that we have in our diocese. And it's a way for us to better be familiar with what is the message of mercy, that message that St. Faustina gave us on divine mercy. And how is it that we can look at ourselves and see what we can do differently in how we live and practice our faith. And so, um, again, recapping a little bit briefly about what what is done, um, they offer counseling and guidance, assistance, even having training and classes for um, those of us that are interested in going deeper into our spiritual formation, our spiritual development, looking at, you know, how are ways that we are listening to God? How are we meditating on the Word, on the divine Word that is Jesus, What are some ways that we're contemplating? Looking, of course, through the lens of St. John of the Cross, but also looking at St. Teresa of Avila, 
two great mystics that we have in our church. These two individuals who helped us in a very uh, important time of our, our faith, being able to know is how do we stop? How do we listen? How do we go deeper into prayer? And so another thing is, has been is looking at that the conferences that have been done in the past, but also looking towards the future. Those two conferences that are coming up, again, we're looking forward to two conferences. First, um, let's talk because of uh, the conference that is done annually. So it's the first conference is February 22nd, 2020, which is the conference that is a Divine Mercy Conference, the 10th annual. Mm -hmm. Second being the youth conference or youth rally, um, and that is uh, January 18th, 2020, Holy Fire uh, Conference, and that is encouraging and inviting the young people. We're looking at middle school aged children who can join us, who can be participating, who can grow also in their faith by, by experiencing how the greater church, how we as a diocese and how as a nation we come together, um, and not just as, as parish. And so I would like to take time to thank both Cynthia's, Cynthia uh, Aguilar and Cynthia Cavasa for being here with us. And we also like to remind you that you can always follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, on our diocese webpage. Again, um, I'd like to thank you for joining us for another edition of Diocese Insight. Um, I'm filling in for um, our director for uh, Brenda Nieros Riojas. My name is Luis Espinosa. Thank you for joining us. My name is Luis Espinosa, and today I want to share with you a little bit more about the Annunciation. The Annunciation is a feast that we celebrate in the church every March 25th. One of the conversations that I've had in the past is, when do we celebrate the Incarnation? When do we celebrate the conception of Jesus? And a lot of times, my, the answers I get in response to that question is December 25th. And I said, December 25th, wow. So he was conceived and he was born on the same day. So that eventually causes people to think a little bit more. And so it helps them remember and realize that, you know, in the church, nine months before we celebrate Jesus' birth on Christmas Day is actually March 25th. So in the church, March 25th is that day that we celebrate of Christ being conceived and what is it that, that scripture that we look forward to and that we re remind ourselves about that great event of God becoming one like us except in sin. So the conception of Jesus, we celebrate it in the church on March 25th. We remember those words that are given to us by the Gospel of Luke. The angel Gabriel appears to Mary and says, Salve, hail, favored one. That greeting is the greeting of the angel, the archangel to Mary. Hail, favored one. Hail, blessed one. The one who is free from sin. The one who has been prepared by the Father, by God, to be able to conceive in her womb. Free from sin. So she's free to make a choice free to say yes and to respond to that invitation to be able to be the God-bearer, to be the Theotokos. So Mary says yes. She responds in a way that is in keeping with God's will. Her fiat, her yes to God, her yes to the plan of salvation. So the Annunciation, 
again, is a celebration, is a feast that we have March 25th, that we remember Mary in her role in the plan of salvation of saying, yes, let it be done to me according to your word. Says yes to God to be able to bring forth Jesus, to be able to give Jesus his humanity. Thank you for joining me. Diocese Insight is brought to you and supported by the Valley Catholic Newspaper.